so you can start sir you are all ready yeah okay go okay then i'll start okay yeah uh, good morning uh today i'm going to start with the silicon control rectifiers and its application is it audible yes sir okay yes, okay sir. yes yes so this is a part of module 2 that is fet and ser topics main topics covered are fet and ser and fet material i have already said in google classroom and ser i am covering here again i will uh, no come back to fet and i'll discuss okay in the next classes so uh, these are the contents i discuss on ser first uh, let me introduce the device ser silicon controlled rectifier it is so what it is and uh, some basics of ser how does this ser works characteristics or how this scr behaves for different voltages positive and negative voltages and then uh, finally i'll discuss importance of this scr its practical applications and then finally i'll conclude so this is a, a content so let me give brief introduction to this uh, device scr so can you differentiate a regular diode and this rectifier diode controlled rectifier i have said regular diode is a ac to dc converter that is rectifier you said but this is also a rectifier but you have control over the output it is controlled rectifier the name itself says controlled rectifier so silicon controlled rectifier indicates it is made up of silicon and the device is uh, scr but it is made up of silicon and you have control over the output that is a meaning of it and this is not like a normal diode this is power device actually do you understand the meaning of power device power device is a device which can which is capable of operating at 230 volts even 250 volts 300 volts if you give this device will work fine without any problem that is a meaning of power device so all other devices till now what we have discussed where we can operate those devices only at 10 volts 12 volts 18 volts maximum 24 volts not more than that so power level and signal level electronics there is a big difference based on their uh, capability of handling power so that is a power device when i say you should be able to understand that it is capable of handling large power and large voltage large current that is a meaning so this device falls under category of power devices okay so this has got very uh, uh, ad uh, important advantages uh, it has got practical applications i will discuss in detail in the later part of it so first it was introduced in 1956 by bell telephone laboratories and uh, <clears throat> it can convert as i said it can convert alternating current into direct current and at the same time it can control the amount of power fed to the load so what i'm trying to tell i am trying to tell that this scr is also a rectifier which converts ac to dc but it can control the amount of power fed to the load whereas in diode rectifier only the conduction when you see the conduction 0 to pi the diode used to conduct for 0 to pi and there was no control over the output suppose i want output at 90 degree it was not possible to control in control in diode but in scr it is possible at 90 degree instead of 
zero to y conduction i can con make it conduct i can make sr conduct from zero to 90 degree or 90 to 180 degree or 30 to 90 degree that is possible with this sr that's why we call it as silicon controlled rectifier uh, <clears throat> controlled rectifier meaning is that so the symbolically it looks like this so what is the difference sr and diode anode you have cathode you have that you find in uh, regular diode also but the extra terminal is gate here what is extra terminal gate that is a control terminal we call that is why this device is capable of controlling the output because in the fabrication itself it is uh, the extra gate terminal is fabricated so that extra terminal sitting at extra terminal you can control the operation very well or control the output very well so that uh, gate voltage what you apply makes a big difference in this device so it has got three terminals gate anode and cathode and it has got main application that is switching application so coming to the structure of uh, scr how it is different from a regular diode that is a question to be raised here uh, i said just one extra terminal you have that is gate what is the difference only extra terminal you have is gate here but see the structure i said pn pn structure first line scr consists of a four layer pn pn structure with output layers are referred to as anode that is p type and cathode is n type the control terminal of scr is named as gate and connected to the p type layer located next to the gate the three junctions are normally denoted as j1 j2 j3 and they are numbered serially with j1 being the nearest one don't worry if you don't understand this next i will display its structure then you will have better understanding so, so this is how scr looks like this is how scr structure uh, you can see so i have three di diagrams here a simplified construction i have shown in a diagram a and b uh, is is like you know uh, how two transistor uh, transistors are embedded into the structure <clears throat> in this basic scr structure two transistors are uh, uh, internally connected or you can say fabricated in the fab lab itself can you so what, what are these two transistors one is p n p p n p and n p n so the same structure can be looked into this way looked in in this way that is it has got one p n p transistor and another is n p n transistor so this second layer third layer are divided into two halves actually this n1 is divided like this n1 and n1 and sorry and p2 is divided into two halves so it looks like pnp transistor and npn transistor i think uh, most of you have studied uh, about diode and transistor in poc so transistor symbol if you know that is more than enough at this stage i will discuss that in detail uh, in the in the next module okay so transistor same structure when you write circuit wise the structure the circuit looks like this same scr structure is having this circuit internally <coughs> so you can see anode anode <coughs> Uh, this is uh, emitter terminal the base of the trans hello uh, 
just a second. Uh, any any query? Uh, you can no. J any query? Just uh, message here. Uh, okay, in the chat. Just put in chat. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, so this is a transistor structure. Just identify the terminals here. One transistor PNP, another transistor NPN. Why NPN, the second transistor I'm talking? Because arrow is outward, right? In the first transistor, arrow is, arrow is inward. You can see the emitter terminal is inward. It is entering into the junction, but here, it is leaving the junction in the second transistor just you just observe that uh, the arrow is going outward so arrow going outward transistor we call it as npn transistor and arrow entering into the junction we call it as pnp transistor because the structure says it is pnp transistor first and then npn transistor it is so same pnp transistor NPN transistor. They are coupled like this or they are connected like this in the device structure itself. So we call this model or this circuit as an equivalent circuit of SCR or you can say two transistor model of SCR. Okay, you, you can uh, you will find this uh, these names very familiar uh, very uh, frequently heard in the textbook. Okay. So how this uh, circuit works? <clears throat> so coming back to the same circuit, one extra terminal gate I said in the SCR. This is a gate terminal actually. G G where I have written G is a gate terminal, and sitting here one can control the operation of the device so you apply the voltage across anode and cathode anode and cathode of the scr and sitting at the gate you can control the operation that is current flowing through the device can be controlled in a better way using gate terminal that is applying gate voltage at the gate terminal okay so that is what written here load is connected in series with the anode the anode is always connected at the higher potential than cathode and the working of scr can be explained into two modes one is when gate is open that is without the application of gate voltage how your device behaves and when you apply the gate voltage how behavior changes that is what you have to make out here so that is what i said the important application of this SCR is switching, correct? On and off process is called switching. So in switching action only, this SCR is preferred. For example, when you want to control the fan speed or vary the fan speed, you need to, or you can say just on and off process for you are turning on some uh, uh, bulb or any load uh, the lighting the system okay so uh, when you turn on the device it works as a closed switch when you turn off the device it acts as an open switch right so same concept is applied in most of the switching application so here also when gate voltage is not applied see you can see p n p n four transistors four layers sorry four layers connected you it has got three junctions three pn junctions pn junction pn junction and pn junction so j1 j2 j3 are the three junctions four layer 
device it is. I said three terminal, anode, cathode, and gate. Three terminal device it is. So definitely you are applying anode cathode voltage here just to see the operation of the device and then you are controlling sitting at the gate so this anode cathode voltage is applied through load resistance rl that is between anode and the battery i have connected rl so i have applied this voltage now when i apply this voltage what is the state of this pn junction what are the status of these pn junction which are the p devices or which are the junctions that are forward biased you have to make out now so j1 junction is forward biased and j3 is also forward biased with this battery polarity how because positive terminal of the battery v is connected to p type material and negative terminal is connected to n type material you can just observe in the diagram that's why j1 and j3 are forward biased i said i hope you understand because we have discussed diode in detail pn junction in detail in the beginning classes of electronics so same thing i am applying but here we have three junctions there only one junction we discussed right so with this polarity when you say j1 is forward by us there is a recombination of holes and electrons across the junction and there is a flow of current across the junction here also there is a possibility of current flow because j3 is j3 is also forward biased j2 is reverse bias how j2 is reverse bias can anybody message me how j2 is reverse bias see this positive terminal is connected to anode definitely positive connected to p definitely it is forward bias negative connected to n definitely it is forward bias that's why i said j1 and j3 are forward bias but what about j2 j2 is reverse bias because it is exactly ulta for n it is p is connected for p it is n is connected so this junction j2 is reverse biased so what is the meaning two junctions are forward biased one junction is reverse biased so device is not conducting you have applied positive voltage no doubt but till device is in blocking state we call it is forward blocking state of the scr why because j2 is not allowing current current to flow through the device because it is reverse bias even when j1 and j3 are forward biased so that is hello yes so just to turn on this there are two ways one you can apply you can increase the voltage applied here or another way is apply the gate voltage and turn on the device so just i will show you here when gate is positive with respect to cathode now what i'm trying to tell with application of gate voltage how your device behaves first case without no voltage gate voltage no gate voltage that was the operation it was in forward blocking state it was not conducting so current conduction through the device is zero or negligible why i say negligible there is there may be some current flowing because of minority carriers in the device so that is negligible so next uh, when you apply the gate voltage just see here i have applied the gate voltage 
So between the gate and cathode, there is a voltage battery connected. So in addition to this main voltage applied between anode and cathode, I am applying gate, gate voltage and I am setting some gate current to turn on the device. That is the idea here. So now concentrate. J3 and J1 was forward biased in the beginning only told. J2 was reverse biased. With this condition, you are applying. <coughs> I'm sorry. Yes. So here you can observe, just I'm trying to explain what is happening in the circuitry. Electrons from N type material n type which is connected to cathode electrons here they start moving across the junction j3 correct why because electrons are repelled by the negative terminal of a battery so they start moving towards j2 junction and similarly holes move from p type material towards the right Eventually, the electrons that moved across J3 are now attracted across J2. This initiates the gate current. And J2 is, you say, it is conducting. Earlier, it was not conducting. Now it is conducting because you have applied the gate voltage, positive gate voltage. Positive, why I said positive? Because positive terminal of this gate battery is connected to the gate. So it is positive with respect to cathode. So that will overcome the barrier here because there is a flow of charge carriers across the junction and uh, it will forward bias the J2 junction. That is how device is turned on. So what extra effort?